I welcome you all to the module number 11 of this course. So, module number 11 is basically emotional intelligence part 2. So, we are we will keep discussing about the different concepts of emotional intelligence. So, in this module we will be again talking about different skills. We have already discussed some skills of emotional intelligence in the earlier module. We will keep uh, discussing uh, the other specific skills related to emotional intelligence in this module. So, today we will be covering uh, one particular skill of emotional intelligence that is called as self motivation. So, this is the first lecture of module 11 and overall it is lecture number 26. <coughs> so, before that we have already discussed uh, self awareness then self regulation uh, today we will be talking about self motivation. So, just to give you a brief recap of what we discussed in the last lecture. In the last lecture, we uh, discussed the concept of self regulation and self control as an important uh, component of emotional intelligence. So, in that context, we have discussed some terms which are related to self management. Uh, one that we discussed is delayed gratification uh, and how it is connected to the concept of self control and self regulation we have discussed. So, delay of gratification basically is, is an ability to resist the temptation for immediate reward to get a better or favorable reward in the future. So, that resisting of temptation for immediate thing to get a better uh, reward in the future uh, is something called as a delayed gratification and it is a basically specific aspect of self control itself and self regulation the term is a very broad term which includes the diverse uh, self uh, regulation abilities. So, self control is one specific aspect of it self and delayed gratification is one specific uh, uh, instance of self control. So, we also discussed the concept of self distancing and how it is relevant in the context of self regulation. Uh, self distancing is about uh, kind of you know uh, creating a distance between uh, your thoughts, emotions and behavior and looking from a distant perspective or a detached perspective about your own thoughts, emotions and behavior. So, this gives an objectivity as well as more holistic con context to understand things and regulate emotions. When we become self immersed and we just identify with the emotions and thought then we are not able to objectively look at things and not able to regulate emotions particularly. So, we discuss the diverse aspect of self distancing and how it is relevant in the context of emotion regulation. All these things we have discussed and we also discuss specific uh, strategies that can be used for self dis distancing. Uh, so, those are these are the uh, concept that we have discussed in the last lecture. Uh, today, we will be talking about the concept of self motivation. We will be discussing the concept of motivation and self motivation. We will be also talking about dimensions of more self motivation. In that context, we will be also discussing intrinsic as well as extrinsic motivation and uh, how, how it impacts our behavior and performance. And we will be also little bit talking about the concept of self determination theory and how it talks about intrinsic or self motivation and how it relates to various psychological needs. Uh, we will be talking about three layers and four C's of self motivation. So, these are the some of the things that we will be discussing in today's lecture. So, let us start. So, before we talk about self motivation, let us understand what is motivation itself. So, when we use the term motivation, it refers to any force it refers to any force that energizes and directs behavior. So, motivation is kind, kind of force that we experience within us uh, which gives an energy and direction to our behavior. So, when we are motivated there is an energy that we want to do something and obviously, it will be in certain directions. So, there is a goal I want to reach. So, when I am highly motivated that means, there is a high energy and I am energetic in terms of energy is there to go there. and with a specific direction to reach that goal. So, the concept of motivation includes sense of energy and direction towards to the whatever behavior we do to reach something. Energy gives behavior its strength. So, when we are motivated there is a strength in our behavior because there is energy involved in it. It gives strength intensity and persistence. So, it is because when we are motivated there is a strength, there is an intensity and there is a persistence in what we do. So, that is the energy part of it and direction gives behavior its purpose and goal directedness. Without 
proper direction, uh, just energy will not lead us anywhere. So, proper direction is also important. So, when we are, you use the term motivation, it includes these two aspects that any force that energizes and directs our behavior that is the motivation. So, to be motivated basically means to be moved to do something. So, whenever we are motivated, there will be movement to do something. So, that that is how the term is derived. A person who feels no impetus or no motivation or inspiration to act is characterized as unmotivated. So, if someone is unmotivated means there is no motivation, there is no intensity, there is no energy, there is no direction, person has no uh, impetus or inspiration to act. So, then it is uh, unmotivated action, whereas someone who is energized and activated towards any goal or end is considered motivated. The motivation arises from different sources, why we are motivated, sometimes we are motivated because some needs are there that we want to fulfill those needs, so motivation arises. So, if I feel thirsty, I will be motivated to drink the water. So, this thirst need creates a motivation and uh, we act in such a way to fulfill those uh, needs, so that need creates a sense of motivation. Uh, motivation can also come from cognitions, whatever thought processes you have. So you can kind of think that some goals are very important for you. So, you will be motivated to achieve that. So, thought processes can create motivation. Emotions can create motivations. Many times we are highly emotional about some aspects or some objects, then we are motivated to achieve those things. Sometimes environmental events also create motivation that we like something and then we are, we direct, we, we, we are kind of uh, directed towards achieving those events or whatever environmental stimulus. So, that can also create motivation. So, motivation can arise from diverse sources uh, and uh, so, so the, the, there can be diverse uh, source of motivation. Now, there is a controversy uh, related to the concept of motivation in the context of emotional intelligence that uh, some people uh, whether motivation is a component of emotional intelligence or not. So, there is a controversy in the sense some in some theorists believe that motivation is an important part of emotional intelligence while other things it is not a core component. So, for example, Goldman's model uh, that we have already discussed, uh, the Goldman, Goldman's theory basically posits that motivation forms a subset of EI. So, in the Goldman's model, self-motivation is an important com core component of emotional intelligence. Other theories such as Mayer and Selovey, uh, they reject the notion of motivation as a subset of EI. So, they do not consider motivation as a core component of EI. They argue that EI and motivation are related but separate constructs. They can be related but they are not exactly the core component of emotional intelligence. So, this kind of kind of there is a kind of inconsistency in the theoretical perspective of whether motivation is a part of emotional intelligence or not, but the, the main uh, idea behind discussing this whole concept of self motivation here is that whether we consider motivation as a subset of EI or related construct, it is worth understanding the concept of motivation and how it facilitates EI. It is important to understand the concept of self motivation and how it can facilitate EI or emotional intelligence. So, it is it's a related construct even if you do not consider it as a core component, it is important in the context of emotional intelligence. So, it is worth discussing it here uh, 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 even if we leave aside this whole theoretical controversy. So, we have understood what is motivation, now let us understand what is self motivation, what is in what context this word self motivation is used. So, just to understand that, let us take two example here. In the first case, a student loves let us say mathematics and enjoys solving the problem, mathematical problem. Uh, he is excited about mathematics and uh, looks forward to assignment and task given on mathematics. So, here is a person who loves mathematics, enjoys solving problem, looks forward to assignments of mathematics in the course whatever is given. So, this is one scenario case of one student. Another student, a student does mathematics assignment and task out of fear and punishment or law grade. So, the, this person, the second person, uh, he is not enjoying mathematics, but he is kind of doing it out of fear that you know, 
if he he is not or she is not kind of uh, practicing it then they will be punished or get lower grade and so on so there is no inherent joy in doing mathematics he is not particularly excited or passionate about the subject so if you take these two cases uh, the case one is a typical case of self motivation so in the case of case one the person is self motivated in the context of mathematics so the person inherently enjoys doing it so there is a motivation that comes from inside so no one is even forcing or even if there is no uh, you know outside reward or pressure the person will still be doing it because he loves and enjoys doing that so that's the case of typical case of self motivation the motivation that is generated from within not from the outside in the case second case the motivation for doing mathematics comes from outside uh, of fear of punishment or getting low grade so there is an outside motivator in case of first one there is an inside motivation so that is self motivation the first case is a typical case of self motivation so the self motivation is the internal drive so it's an in internal drive so it comes from inside that helps us initiate continue and work towards a goal so it's whenever we say we are self motivated that means that motivation is coming from inside to initiate something to continue doing that and work towards the and reaching the goal in trick all these cases there is an internal drive to do that so if such a drive is there then one is self motivated so it is the ability to motivate oneself to take action or pursue goals without relying heavily on external factors or even so external factors can influence but it uh, the primarily the motivation is coming from inside external factors a reward uh, may not be the major factor in the context of self motivation so what are the dimensions of self motivation so as self motivation is one of the important part of goleman's model so according to daniel goleman self motivation has many important components some of these components are one is self drive that is the component it is one of the component of self motivation self drive basically it refers to an individual's internal motivation and determination to achieve the goal so the drive drive that is coming from inside self drive is an important component of self motivation so it involves having a strong sense of personal agency taking initiative and being self motivated rather than relying heavily on external factors for the motivation so self drive is kind of inseparable component of self motivation so whatever we actually mean by self motivation is basically self drive so it is about having a strong sense of personal agency that you want to do something so and you are initiating the action without much re relying on external factors so you want to do something you are doing it uh, you are taking the initiative and doing it so that's the self drive so individuals with high self drive are proactive self starters and demonstrate a strong desire to achieve success so if you have a self drive you are very proactive you will do it without really waiting for something from the outside to start you will be self starter and demonstrate strong desire to achieve and success so that is another important component of self motivation is self drive another uh, the next component of self motivation is passion passion relates to the deep and intense enthusiasm or interest in the specific area so it's, if someone is passionate means there is intense interest and enthusiasm for doing something in a specific area so in our earlier example it's let's say in the first case the person was passionate about the mathematics because there was an deep and intense enthusiasm and interest in the subject so that's the passion whenever we are self motivated passion is also uh, will be one of the aspect of it it involves being strongly connected to one's values interest and intrinsic motivation so it's more about intrinsic motivation that we'll be talking about so passion is connected to your values generally we are passionate about things uh, for which we have we gives lot of values to them so which which are in kind of concurrent with our values or interests then we are generally passionate about those things where we are interested in it where there is an intrinsic motivation to do something then we become passionate about those things so passionate individuals are driven by their love and dedication to what they do 
which fuels their commitment, persistence and enjoyment in their pursuit. So, passionate individuals are generally dubbed by, uh, driven by uh, their love and dedication to do something and uh, that is also an aspect of self motivation. So, self motivation will have self drive, passion, third is called initiative, initiative. So, generally whenever we are self motivated, we initiate actions towards achieving that goal uh, without really waiting for external reward. So, that initiative refers to our ability to take proactive action and be self starter. You initiate the action without waiting for someone else to do it or something else to happen in the environment. So, you initiate the action and maintain that. So, that is the initiative. So, individuals with a high level of initiative do not wait for external instructions and prompts, but instead take the lead in initiating tasks, projects and actions. So, that is something uh, also very important aspects of self motivation. So, if you are self motivated in something, you will take initiative without really waiting for external instructions or things to happen or things to become favorable in the outside then you take or wait for someone to help or something like that. Uh, generally, you will be motivated to initiate the actions and uh, whatever action is re required because you are motivated yourself. So, that is then initiative part of it. Uh, so, people with initiative they are more motivated to seize opportunities, make things happen and drive progress. So, this is something and another component of uh, self motivation. So, the next one is achievement orientation. Uh, many times when we are self motivated, there can be also achievement orientation in it. So, when we say achievement orientation, we are talking about individuals orientation towards setting and accomplishing uh, challenging goals. So, generally uh, when we are very motivated, generally there will be an achievement orientation in a sense. Uh, we are orient we will be oriented towards setting goals and accomplishing challenging goals uh, because you are interested in it there is a self drive so achievement orientation could be a natural thing in that context it involves having a strong drive to succeed striving for excellence and being focused on continuous improvement so this is these are also another characteristics of people with achievement orientation and it could be associated with self motivation. So, individuals with high achievement orientations are motivated by the pursuit of personal growth, mastery and the satisfaction of achieving their objectives. So, people will be satisfied uh, and motivated by their own personal growth, achieving more mastery because they are interested in those areas and uh, satisfying satisfaction of achieving their objectives. So, in the case of example of uh, self motivation of student with the mathematics, love for mathematics. So, they will be motivated by just knowing more and more about mathematics because they are interested and the more mastery they get in the field of mathematics, more happiness they will get and satisfaction uh, by doing that. So, all internal drives will be connected to that. So, achievement orientation could be a very natural outcome for self motivated people. Uh, the next one is result orientation. Uh, some people also could be uh, result oriented refers to uh, the focus on achieving tangible outcomes and results uh, could also be associated with self motivation. It involves setting clear goals, tracking, prog uh, tracking progress and taking action to ensure successful outcomes. So, it is about setting goals and uh, progressing in the path and ensuring successful outcomes. So, individual with high uh, result orientation are motivated by seeing their efforts translate into results. So, focus will be on achieving the result, measurable results and doing specific action to bring about that. So, they are driven by a sense of accomplishment and drive satisfaction derive satisfaction from achieving their desired outcomes. So, this also could be another characteristics of self motivation or individuals with self motivation. So, this is something. Uh, so, these are the some of the important characteristics what uh, Goldman talked about in his model of uh, emotional intelligence and the characteristics of self motivation. Now, the concept of self motivation is uh, kind of linked with another concept called intrinsic motivation. 
as a as self motivation is always driven by intrinsic motivation whenever we use the term self motivation we are talking about intrinsic motivation we are self motivated when there is an intrinsic motivation to do something there is an internal drive so both the term self motivation and intrinsic motivation can be used interchangeably so both the terms can be kind of uh, interchangeable because you cannot separate intrinsic motivations from self motivation both are same uh, and connotes the same idea so let us see this term uh, a little, little bit more detail about the concept of intrinsic motivation so when we talk about intrinsic motivation are we also talking about there are other types of motivation so are there different types of motivation so motivation can also be categorized in uh, in in, uh, in terms of intensity so you can uh, you can talk about uh, let's say no low to high motivation in terms of intensity we can also divide motivation in terms of categories the different categories so then uh, then we can talk about motivation in terms of uh, different categories so different categories like uh, we can talk about intrinsic and extrinsic so we can have different categories of emotion also so we can we can kind of divide uh, or categorize uh, motivation into different ways depending on how you look at it so one way is to look at motivation in terms of intensity so some someone one can categorize motivation as low motivation or high motivation we can also categorize motivation in terms of different categories like intrinsic motivation extrinsic motivation so when we're talking about uh, self motivation we are talking about one particular category of motivation so these two types of motivation called intrinsic motivation and extrinsic motivation is elaborately discussed in the in the theory of self determination theory uh, so so this self determination theory uh, uh, proposed by uh, desi and rian and other colleagues uh, they uh, in that more that theory they talked about these two types of motivation based on different reasons or goal that give rise to action so what is the source of the action or motivation uh, determines whether it is an intrinsic motivation or extrinsic motivation so self determination theory talks about many other things but one of the main thing that uh, this theory talks about is that different types of motivation we 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 can have and what factors influences them so in the, at the most basic level there could be two different types of motivation one is intrinsic motivation and another is extrinsic motivation so intrinsic motivation basically it refers to the concept of self motivation which basically talks about doing something because it is inherently interesting or enjoyable so whenever we do something because it is just i love to do do something or i enjoy doing something so the source is internal the motivation is coming from inside you are doing it simply because you like to do it or there is a joy in doing something so that is intrinsic motivation extrinsic motivation is when we do something because it leads to a separable outcome so because you are doing something to get something from the outside then that is extrinsic motivation so if you are doing something to get money for example then it's an extrinsic motivation so the source is out outside the source of the motivation is outside then it is extrinsic if the source of motivation is in internal then it is intrinsic so broadly this could be the two categories of motivation and intrinsic motivation is self motivation basically what we are talking about so over the decades uh, research has shown that the quality of experience and performance can very different can be very different when one is behaving under intrinsic or extrinsic reasons so your performance level your involvement engagement everything will be different based on whether you are working under the influence of intrinsic motivation or under the influence of extrinsic motivation so naturally when we do something under intrinsic motivation our performance our involvement our engagement everything will be much better because you are you are doing it for the love of doing it not because of some external pressure so the quality and everything can be also determined by the kind of motivation that one is engaged in so let us look into the intrinsic motivation a little bit more 
So, intrinsic motivation as we have already defined that it is it is doing uh, of an activity for its inherent satisfaction rather than for some separate reasons or which is uh, in the outside. So, when intrinsically motivated a person is moved to act for the fun or the challenge and daily in rather than because of external broad pressure or reward. So, you are doing it because there is a joy, there is a fun, there is a sense of challenge in doing it which you love to do rather than because of some external pressure that you should do it because somebody else is telling you or you will be getting lot of reward if you do it. So, that is also an external reason. So, when you you are not directed by those external reason then you are behaving as per intrinsic motivation. So, people are generally intrinsically motivated for some activities and not others. So, we are not really intrinsically motivated for, for everything that we do. There may be very few things that we do which are intrinsically motivated. Maybe most of the things that we do are extrinsically motivated. We want something or there is some pressure from outside or there is some reward then we do something. Most of the behaviors are like this and there is no kind of uh, sense of good or bad in it. This is how things are there because we have to do lot of things because of extrinsic reason. Some things we do for intrinsic reasons. So, which is fine. Uh, the research has shown uh, many benefits of intrinsic motivation. So, obviously, the, when you are under intrinsic motivation, our motivation level is generally high and the quality of performance will be better because there is no need for external pressure to do it. You will do it automatically. So, that is how in terms of output quality and other thing will differ in terms of that. Because when you, you are doing it on your own, on your own motivation, self motivation, uh, your quality and engagement everything will be much better. So, intrinsically motivated people show more engagement, sustained effort, achievement, positive self esteem, well being and so on. Because you love to do something, so you are doing it, so you will have experienced more sense of well being also, self esteem also, because there is no pressure. Sometimes we do not want to do lot of things, but we are doing it because there is a pressure to do it, whatever family pressure, parental pressure, societal pressure then you do not enjoy doing those things you have to do because of those pressures. Then it can compromise your well being and so on you know. So, in that context uh, intrinsic motivation has a lot of benefits. So, the term intrinsic motivation and self motivation connotes the same idea as we have already discussed and can be synonymously used. So, when we are using the term intrinsic motivation it is just the same as self motivation that we are talking about. So, extrinsic motivation as per SDD theory is basically when we do an activity for some external outcomes as we have already discussed uh, without that sense of enjoyment and self initiative and those things may not be there. External reasons are the prime drive in case of extrinsic motivation. Although intrinsic motivation is very uh, important type of motivation and in terms of quality, performance and mental health, well being all these things intrinsic motivation is much better, uh, but uh, uh, you know clearly uh, an important type of motivation, uh, but most of the activities that we do may not be intrinsically motivated. Uh, uh, research has also shown that this is special in the case after early childhood as the freedom to be intrinsically motivated becomes increasingly curtailed by the social demands and roles that require individual to assume responsibility for non intrinsically interesting task. So, as the child grows, if you see a child, it will be mostly intrinsically motivated. Whatever child will love to do, it will do th those things only. So, a child generally during the childhood is primarily intrinsically motivated, but as the child grows, lot of external expectation comes into the picture, parental demands, social demands, demands from the schools and so on and lot of this child may not enjoy doing it. So, but it, it has to do it because there is a pressure. So, slowly slowly our intrinsic motivation turns into extrinsic motivation and we do most of the things for extrinsic motivation. In schools for example, it uh, shows uh, a lot of research shows that uh, intrinsic be motivation becomes weaker with each advancing grade. As the child go goes from one grade to another grade, their intrinsic motivation seems to decrease. Uh, so, that is because of the structure of society and uh, our whole society is designed like that. So, 
lot of most of the activities we do may be extrinsically motivated which is okay and uh, very few may be intrinsically motivated and uh, now when we are talking about self motivation uh, kind of uh, understanding that it was so self determination theory also talks about that there could be various types of extrinsic motivation as well so not all extrinsic motivation are typical extrinsic motivation sometimes we do the focus could be external reasons but still it could be very close to intrinsic motivation so a lot of factors can influence there can be diverse grades of extrinsic motivation sometimes we may be doing it almost like intrinsic motivation uh, but again the reason could be external reasons so it so and some extrinsic motivation could be highly extrinsic in the sense that somebody has to give all the pressures and punishment to do something then only you will do something then it is ex very uh, extreme case of extrinsic motivation somewhere some cases could be there where you will be doing something very spontaneously because you even though it is, you are doing it for extrinsic reason but you understand the value of doing it let's say even in the education system also people may not enjoy reading books and uh, you know doing lot of this school work and so on but still one can be highly motivated to perform better in schools it's an extrinsic motivation but still it may be one may be highly motivated and very close to intrinsic motivation because one understand the value of schooling and getting education you understand so extrinsic motivation can also be of various types and uh, uh, some extrinsic motivation could be very close to intrinsic motivation and some could be very extreme case of extrinsic motivation so this all these things actually are described in self determination theory and how can we promote intrinsic motivation and even in case of extrinsic motivation how can we make those towards more intrinsic motivation even in the case of extrinsic motivation so the self determination theory talks about another concept called basic psychological needs where lies the keys to understand the intrinsic motivation or self motivation so this theory self motivation theory uh, uh, says that human being humans have basic psychological needs uh, uh, which are need for autonomy need for relatedness and need for competence and fulfillment of these psychological needs is essential for people psychological health and growth autonomous motivation or more intrinsic motivation optimal functioning and self actualization so according to this theory there are basic psychological needs we all have which are fundamental and basic needs if we can fulfill those basic psychological needs then it will lead to many positive outcomes including better psychological health and growth more intrinsic motivation better functioning in life and more self actualization because these are needs the fulfillment of them is very essential for the health and growth like we have physical needs like we we have to take food and water because these are fundamental needs without that we uh, we cannot be healthy and flourish in our life for survival and flourishing in life we need to provide the basic necessities of this body similarly for psychological there are psychological needs for proper health of the psychological functioning certain basic psychological needs should be fulfilled what are the psychological needs according to this model they are talk talking about three basic psychological needs so these are autonomy autonomy basically is need to feel free from external constraints on behavior so when we feel we all want to feel autonomous or without much external pressure or constraint nobody wants external pressure and constraint on on people you know we want to be experience freedom we want to do things that we want to do like to do something so if there are a lot of pressures lot of constraints in your behavior then autonomy is less then the competence is something the need to feel capable we all want to feel capable and skilled so the more we feel capable or skilled in certain context more competence we have then the third one is relatedness is the need to feel connected or involved with others this is also another basic need that we want to feel connected with other individuals 
the more we feel connected with the people around us, the more sense of relatedness will be there. So, these are the three basic psychological needs just to elaborate on them. Autonomy is satisfied, the need for autonomy will be satisfied when we experience, uh, when the individual feels a sense of choice and volition when carrying out an activity. So, whenever we, we are doing an, any action or activity, if you feel sense of choice and freedom that I can choose to do something, then your sense of autonomy will be high. In contrast, autonomy frustration occurs when individuals feels controlled through internal or external pressure. So, whenever you do something because someone is instructing you or just pressurizing you to do something, that means you do not have any sense of autonomy, you are doing it because someone else is telling you to do it. So, there is no autonomy, there is no sense of choice. The more sense of choice you have, the more autonomy you have and we all, all want to feel autonomous, we all want to experience sense of choice and freedom. So, that is something a basic psychological need, you know. So, more we fulfill this, the better it is for our psychological functioning and uh, even for internal motivation or self motivation. The sense of competence satisfaction occurs when individual feels effective and capable of achieving desired outcome. So, whenever we feel we are effective and skilled enough uh, and able to bring about results in certain directions in our life, then we feel competent. When competence is frustrated, when we are not feeling sense of competence, then the individual feels a sense of failure and has doubt in one's ability. So, whenever we experience failure and other things, generally at that moment we are experiencing lack of competence. We feel we are, uh, we have failed in some something. So, that means we do, we may lack competence or something like that. So, it can depend on that, you know, task to task, context to context. One may feel competent in something and not competent in other things. So, it depends on various aspects of it. So, idea is whenever in doing something, if you feel capable, skilled, that means we are experiencing competence. If you are not feeling that, that means we are experiencing less lack of competence. Relatedness is satisfied when the individual feels a sense of connectedness with others. When the relatedness is frustrated, the individual feels a sense of isolation and loneliness. So, whenever we are doing anything or in any context, if we are present and we feel connected with other individuals, so there is a supportive environment, then we feel sense of relatedness is high and our basic need of relatedness is fulfilled. On the other hand, when we do not feel connected with other people or there is no supportive environment, then uh, we may feel isolated, we may feel lonely and so on. So, that can have negative impact because this is a basic psychological need. If it is fulfilled, it is good for our psychological functioning. If it is frustrated, it can lead to ill, Ill being and other kind of uh, negative experiences. So, these are three major psychological basic needs which when fulfilled leads to many as positive outcomes and when they are frustrated leads to various negative outcomes. This sense of autonomy, competence and relatedness are universal psychological needs. So, according to this theory, every human being wants these things. These are required for proper functioning and psychological health of every individual irrespective of culture and geography. It is an universal thing, uh, psychological need of human being and when satisfied will induce towards well-being and when frustrated will lead to ill-being. So, well-being is connected to their satisfaction. So, basic psychological needs can be described as the psychological nutrients that facilitate psychological growth, integrity and well-being. So, these are like nutrition that are required for psychological health. For body, we need nutrition from the food for its proper health. Similarly, for psychological health, we need nutrition from this. So, these psychological needs are like nutrition for the psychological health. So, these needs are also about personal growth and development. So, they are connected to the growth and development people will seek to enhance this continually through life. So, there is a constant motivation to fulfill them. It may be fulfilled, it may not be fulfilled depending on one's life and context, but people try to fulfill them to the best of their capability. Now, according to self-determination theory, these basic needs are connected to self-motivation and intrinsic motivation or intrinsic motivation. How they are connected? So, basically this theory talks about SDD proposes that intrinsically motivated activities are said to be the ones that provide satisfaction of innate psychological needs 
namely the need for competence, autonomy and relatedness. So, what this uh, theory is proposing that whenever in any context or any task or any work environment, when this basic needs are fulfilled, we become more and more intrinsically motivated or self motivated. The more we fulfill, we more we fulfill this basic psychological needs in a particular context, more we will be self motivated or intrinsically motivated in that context. For example, let us say if, if, if we are doing work in a particular setup or particular corporations, particular organizations and in your job context, if these needs are fulfilled to a large extent, for example, if you feel autonomous in that job, you have a lot of choices uh, to make decisions and uh, decide things. So, your se sense of autonomy will be fulfilled in that job. If you feel competent in doing whatever you are doing, you know the skills and abilities that are required to perform the jobs, the, the more you feel competent, the better it is. So, if you are feeling fully com competent, confidence in doing what you are doing, so your sense of competence will be fulfilled and the people around you with whom you are working, if you feel a sense of connection with them, so there is a supportive relationship with other people, then you will be highly motivated or intrinsically motivated in that job. Why? Because you, you are feeling autonomous, you are also feeling competent and, and people are supportive and you are having a cordial connections with them. So, you will be highly fully satisfied in that job. So, there will be a lot of job satisfaction in that particular context. So, and let us say the job is not providing these things, there is a lack of fulfillment of these things, you are not feeling autonomous all the time, somebody is sitting on your head and uh, guiding, telling you to what to do, your autonomy will be not autonomy will be curtailed, you do not feel competent, you are not able to understand every aspect of your job, your competence will go down and if people are not supportive and they are not having uh, behaving with you properly, your relatedness will also go down, then you will be li will like to run away from that job, it is a natural thing. So, you will not love to work in that particular job, you will try to find out other job and try to run away as, as soon as possible. So, this is a, an example how self motivation or intrinsic motivation can be connected to these basic psychological needs. So, whenever in an any work context or any particular task context or any situation, if these needs are fulfilled to a large extent, then people will be intrinsically motivated or self motivated to that extent. So, to increase intrinsic motivation or self motivation, uh, we can kind of look at the this basic psychological need fulfillment as a particular step to increase self motivation. So, we will be self motivated to task to any task or any particular context. If, if that provides a sense of autonomy, competence and also experience relatedness, connectedness, especially in a teamwork or where there are other people involved. So, self motivation can be enhanced by promoting this basic psychological needs. So, this is what this theory says and lot of research finding clearly says, shows that this is the case. So, how can we support those needs? Some of the general suggestion. Uh, we can kind of enhance those, so fulfill those basic needs to a large extent in different contexts. For example, need for relatedness can be supported. In case of others or in case of oneself also, that we can support the relatedness to for other people around us or for ourselves also. How can we do that? By showing behavior such as expressing affection, whenever we are show concern for other people, try to understand how the, what they are going through, devoting time and resources spending more time to with other people, willingness to help and non-competitive environment. Whenever the comp, comp, com environment is non-competitive and more understanding, then obviously, sense of relatedness is more fulfilled. When there is a lot of competition, then one people will not be kind of cordial to each other. So, automatically the sense of relatedness will be less. So, this kind of providing this kind of environment, one can experience high satisfaction of relatedness. It could be for oneself or for others also. The need for competence can be supported by providing optimal challenges. So, whenever we experience challenging task, too easy task anybody can do and if it is too hard obviously, people, one cannot do it. So, one will feel incompetent. 
but if we get challenging task where i can do it but obviously i have to stretch my skills then you feel a sense of competence in achieving that because it was not easy but not impossible but i tried and could achieve that so sense of competence increases by working in challenging uh, optimum challenges task that re uh, requires optimum challenges immediate and non evaluative feedback so giving proper feedback without really criticizing and um, non evaluative means you don't judge the person but judge his um, performance non evaluative and immediately giving feedback how the person is doing or even for in one's context you can oneself give you yourself feedback or others can give you feedback or helping people to cope with the failure is also important when somebody fails sense of competence goes down so if one can support people to cope with those failure then obviously their need uh, uh, this sense of competence also increases so one can feel that i have failed in this task but i can do it again if that person is able to cope with that failure so sense of competence need not go down all the time when one experiences failure if one person is if he or she is able to cope with that failure so helping people to cope with failure can enhance the sense of competence the need for autonomy can be supported by showing behavior such as absence of coercion not all the time suggesting what to do what not to do so that is that decreases sense of autonomy so so less of such behaviors increases sense of autonomy giving opportunities to choose giving people whatever in every context every uh, context one cannot give all the choices but within whatever context possible if people get choice some sense of choice then it will enhance their sense of autonomy clarifying the relevance of the task and avoiding expression of negative emotions encouraging personal initiatives and recognition recognizing the person's perspective so these are some of the things that can be done in terms of giving people more choices or sense of initiative to do something if those uh, we can provide in an environment the people will experience more autonomy so more autonomy means they will feel more motivated to do task the more competence they feel they will be more self motivated to do the task the more they feel relatedness the more self motivated they will feel to do task so many time we may not be intrinsically motivated in doing something but simply because we love some people and that person says please do it for me you will happy to do something even though you may not like to do it so that sense of relatedness can promote intrinsic motivation so this is how you know we can enhance self motivation or intrinsic motivation by supporting these basic psychological needs now another important researcher uh, scoot geller who is one of the prominent researcher in self motivation uh, talks about few other things but kind of lot of these ideas are similar to this self determination theory uh, he says there are three uh, three questions that we can ask ourselves and help assess whether someone is self motivated or not whether you are self motivated in doing task or someone else is self motivated or not to how do we understand that so the scoot geller says three questions will one can ask and if the if if, if you answer yes to this three question that means we are self motivated so what are these three questions first is can you do it so that is sense of competence that we talked about self efficacy if you can do something or if you have a sense of ability that i will be able to do something then you are more likely to be self motivated do you have the time knowledge and training of what you are asking to do so if you have the time and necessary knowledge and training to do something you will feel capable sense of competence will come and you are more likely to be self motivated in doing that task so the first question is can you do it if you say yes then you are more likely to be self motivated second question is will it work that is response efficacy having a belief that your actions will lead to desired outcome is known as response efficacy what is your belief that if you put actions and efforts if you put efforts to what extent the, there is a likelihood that the result will happen if you think whatever effort i do i will not be able to achieve something then obviously you will not be self motivated you will be dejected and uh, you will not put any effort 
But the moment you think if I put effort, the result is most likely to happen. I will be able to achieve that. Then you will be self-motivated to work. That is called as a response efficacy. Having a strong belief in your ability to succeed despite challenging circumstances is very crucial. So this is something very important. How, what, is, what is your belief that to what extent I will be able to bring about that result? If you believe I can bring about that result, then you will be highly self-motivated. Third question is, is it worth it? Even though maybe you can do it, you have the belief that you can uh, bring about the result, uh, but is it worth it? If you do not feel worth it, then probably you will not be self-motivated. Oh, you may say, I can do it, no, no issues, but I do not think it is worth it. Then you will not be motivated to it. Do Self-motivation will not happen. So, third question is also very important. Is it worth it? Consequences, is it important? So, if you believe it is worth it, you have considered the cost against the consequences and concluded that the consequence outweighed the cost. So, whatever the consequence of your actions, if you think it is worth it, it is important and I, it is worth it in the sense of your time and effort, then you will be self-motivated in doing that. So, these three questions are very important. If one, one should ask these three questions and if you can answer yes to all the three, that means you are self-motivated or it can be used for other people also. So, these are the three questions that can help you to judge whether you are self-motivated or not. Uh, Scott Geller also talks about four C's for to feel self-motivated. In order to feel self-motivated, four C's are very important and which are very much connected to self-determination theory concept that we talked about basics needs also. One is consequence, consequences. In order to be self-motivated, it is, it is important to genuinely desire the outcome that you are linked to your actions rather than merely acting to avoid negative consequences. So, you to feel self-motivated, it is important that you desire the outcome, whatever actions you are doing, that you want it to happen, you want that consequence, not just because I should do it because you know it, by doing it I will avoid some consequence. No, you love that consequence and you want to have have that consequence. So in order to feel self motivated, it is important that you desire the outcomes that you are working towards. It you have a sense of attachment or you as a sense of desire that you want to achieve uh, something. So that is that is the consequence part of to feel self motivated. It is important to desire the outcome. Second is competence. If you can answer affirm affirmatively to all the three questions that we ask, basically if you feel competent in doing something, you will also feel self-motivated. So, sense of competence as we have already discussed is important. So, uh, one will develop a sense of competence and capability to accomplish tasks. The more you feel competent and capable, more you will feel self-motivated. Because whenever we feel that I am, I will not be able to do it or I do not have the skills to do it, you feel less motivated and you want to avoid that because you feel there is no point in putting effort because I may not be able to do, uh, bring about the results because I lack skills. Then self-motivation will decrease. But if you feel competent, capable, then you will be much more self or much more uh, intrinsically motivated or self-motivated. Third is choice as we said which is connected to the sense of autonomy. To experience a sense of autonomy and control over your actions foster self-motivation. The moment you feel you have a choice, you can determine, you can choose, you can initiate something, then you will feel more self-motivated to do it. On, in contrast, when you do not feel any choice, everything is constrained, you do not feel motivated to do those tasks. So, the perception of choice is very important uh, in, in order to feel self-motivation or experience self-motivation. Fourth is community which is connected to again relatedness from the self-determination theory. It is about social support network and connection with other is crucial to feel motivated and cultivating beliefs in your ability and potential for achievement. Individual who experience a sense of connection and belongingness with others tend to feel motivated. So, this is something we have already discussed where if in any context if you feel support and connection with other people, especially in the group work situation. then you will be highly motivated to work in that particular environment. Self-motivation is more likely to happen as compared to when people are not, there is no sense of connection with other people, you feel sense of loneliness and dejection and isolation, uh, then self-motivation will decrease. 
So, sense of community or support to connection with other people is also very important. So, to feel self motivated some of these factors are very important and uh, they can promote self motivation and mostly these are connected to the basic psychological needs. So, these are some of the things and concepts related to self motivation and uh, this is an important aspects of even behaving or emo emotional intelligence. Uh, particularly, this has given lot of importance in the Daniel Goldman's model. So, with this I stop here and the next class we will be talking about other skills of emotional intelligence. Thank you. Thank you.